Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of FS Passengers. With me, we heard 37. So, in this episode, we are going to fly from Kodiak, PADQ, over to Cordova, PACV. I was actually just trying to fly this a second ago, and uh, we were right over here on the taxiway, and it crashed. I don't know why. Let me select the active company, YouTube Airlines. I hope it didn't record that. I I got out of it and tried to re, uh, redo my save. Because um, why should we get crash on the taxiway? So we hit something. Company manager. I'm going to do something with the prices. I'm going to take that down to 310. See if that helps any. Let's take that to 480. I don't. I still don't think they'll... they'll uh, yeah, just eight passengers. It's still not a hundred percent. I got it. Fifty percent fuel. Let's see how much cargo we can get in this thing. Five forty-seven. Ah, five fifty. There we go. Five fifty. Hundred percent. All right. Set tight. Normal flights. Set destination. Set P A C V. There's actually two destination set. This check flight control. There's actually two airports. Uh, I can't remember which one's. Maybe the municipal one or something. It has a runway of like 1,800 feet. I didn't want to land there. Um, it's right on the water, and it looked like there might be a hill to the side of it, but it's only 1,800 feet, so I didn't want to land there. So we're going to the other Cordova, which has like a 7,200 maybe foot runway. Alaska Airlines runs uh, flights out of there. So we're going to that one. There's tanks. Battery. Nav. Mags. Fuel pump. Primer. Ah, oh, shoot. I didn't hit the primer anyway. Move those up. There's the primer. There we go. She's running. Move that all the way up. Fuel pump off, left alternator on, right alternator on, mags, right fuel pump, primer, start her up. Move that over. Fuel pump comes off. Stall heat, pedo heat, avionics bus. We'll go ahead and turn the, the icing stuff on while we're on the ground. Turn this on. Passengers do have their seatbelts on. I couldn't remember if I hit that or not. 273 miles. Set my altimeter. 7,500 feet is where we're going to be going to. That's actually uh, up ground. We're going to the east. Kodiak ground. Sierra Whiskey 774 with Romeo. Request taxi for takeoff. East departure. Here we go. 7,500. That's where we, the runway they gave me last time. Acknowledge that. Turn on the progressive taxi. Parking brake comes off. We'll go ahead and push back. Yeah, that's a bunch of BS, man. We were right over here just taxiing along and hit, hit. Something. It, there's nothing there. So I'm not really sure. But you can see the airport is flooded. I don't know why. Could have to do with some of this scenery. Um, we've got Open LC Alaska going. I think that causes some problems like uh, Koyuk. You can't have that running or it has trees all over the runway. Southern Alaska is also installed and running. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the stop that right there. I wanna check something very quickly. I'll be right back. All right, I went to realism, and uh, let me see something right here. Taxi light, and I turned off um, collisions or accident or whatever, because we're gonna go right by that area again, and there's nothing there, so I don't know what to avoid, and I don't want to have to do this for a third time. Plus, they'll probably put me right back at the same place. 
I changed my parking position, but we only moved like two spots down. I was hoping we would uh, end up somewhere else in the airport. But no. I can't remember if I even made it to the edge. I think we were about to turn down there, somewhere around there. And uh, it's just, yeah, it said crash. Nobody killed, nobody got killed, but it docked me like 800 points. So I was like, no way. And it was kind of funny. It has like an accident report and it said we um, concluded that one engine was putting out, maybe I said I had one throttle set higher than the other or something. And that's what caused on the, uh, uh, it was on the takeoff it said it was, I was taxing. I'm cutting over here because this is, that's over right where the accident, the collision occurred. It's weird. Sometimes that kind of stuff happens in FSX. Yeah, it was like right in here, actually. Because I remember we had just turned, I think, because I saw exactly where I run I thought our runway was going to probably be over here. The taxi. I'm really worried right now. I don't want to crash into anything. Though no, there's nothing here. All right. When I went to go uh, over to the reels, FS passengers said something. Uh, don't do something. And don't cheat yourself. It's like, I'm not cheating anything. Got me crashing into stuff that's not there. So I don't know where this runway is. Is that the, going that way? It'd have to because if it comes to the left, yeah. You would be in the community. So we're going to have to taxi on around. Couldn't just take off right here. <laughs> Wish we could just take off this way. Be the quickest. The FSX doesn't like, doesn't like you to be able to take off quick. I'm just really worried that we don't run into anything right now. Like I said, you couldn't actually see anything. Hmm, so that's not the runway. Where is the runway? The runway, as you can see, comes to our left. Although, there's a tower over there to the left, so that could be the end of the runway over here. Coming back that way, but it seems like too close to the community. If you cut over that way, yeah, you can see the taxi going down to the right now. I'm glad that crash didn't happen now when we came into Kodiak. It took me two flights to come in because the weather on the first one was just abominable. And uh, I had that screw up when I went to the map and it accidentally clicked the plane and it freaking turned me everywhere. But it turned it on the map and then it set me down right on Kodiak. And I was like, well, that sucks. Oh, sweet this is the runway right here awesome awesome it was not where I thought it was I'm gonna go turn that back on real quick be right back all right that's back on let's uh, ask for permission from the tower Kodiak Tower Sierra Whiskey 774 ready for east departure at runway 2 Niner Sierra Whiskey 774 clear for that's 2 Niner by the way Acknowledge that. Anti-collision. Landing lights. Flaps coming out. Turning off the anti-ice. Well, how many notches of flaps are coming out? I just asked for one.
how far? Wait a second. Are we gonna have to taxi down there anyway? Yeah. Okay. We uh we can't take off on this short of distance. We're fully loaded. Fully loaded, so we'll go out here to the right. I just don't think we would have been able to take off that short of runway. Alright, this is a wide runway. I think they do, yeah, they bring in some big planes. Like I said before, I think the military uh, flies planes in here sometimes. All right, here we go. Sixty knots, eighty knots. Maybe we would have actually been able to take off from right there. Not sure. Under knots, let's go ahead and get up. Pause the brake, gear up. I guess we'll turn before the mountains because we don't need to actually go over there. And she feels really heavy for some reason. Tracking the flaps. Try to reduce my climb here. We need to cut to the right. I was, at first I was going to go over those mountains, but then there's, I was thinking about there's no real reason to. You know, there's tons of mountains in this area. Here we go. I don't know what has been on the other side of those mountains, but more mountains. mountain here to our left, but we're clear of that. There we go. We're set to GPS. Kind of like to take a look at Kodiak before we get out of here too far. Autopilot. Nav. sitting right with the mountains. It's an awesome approach for what runway that was. I can't remember. We'd have to look at the last episode. But man, that approach was awesome. Coming right down that valley, that was sweet. I really enjoyed that approach. Losing air speed. Usually it climbs right at a thousand feet a minute. I thought it would continue that, but uh, it actually went a little high there. Too much nose up action. Come on, air speed. We usually are around 100%, so I'm kind of confused why uh, the air speed is dropping so much. we packed enough fuel. I think we did. I mean, it's what... Yeah, 268. I was thinking it was 300 something, but yeah, 268. So we should be good. Should be just fine. Climb. I don't know why it went over a thousand again. I'm going to turn the anti-ice back on. I won't do the surface. But uh, we have a problem with icing in this plane up here in Alaska all the time, so we have to leave that on. At least the prop heat. And like I said, we'll uh, climb to 7,500 feet. Make sure that's the taxi light. 
not where I want to go. There we go. I was <laughs> good. Glad I checked because I was going to need the nav. Can't pop that panel out. I don't think it tells us how long it is anyway. This one might. I think this one does. One hour, 51 minutes. But uh, we'll, of course, be going a lot faster when we get up to our cruising altitude. Coming up on 4,700 feet. Well, I'd really like the scenery around here. Although we're about to head over the uh, ocean. And out east. to get in these daggone clouds. I have a real problem with visibility doing these Alaska flights. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed it up, everyone. And uh, we'll be back in just a little bit.
All right, everybody, gonna slow it down here. About 28 miles out. Let's go to the nearest airport list. Go to the ATC or autopilot. Cordova Smith BACV. I really thought that they would have a tower, to be quite honest. Let's go look at the map. Look at the map. I really thought there would be a tower. Because they do have like Alaska Airlines and some big airlines come in through there. PCV. Okay, so we want either 9 or 27. Might as well take 27 use the ILS. Don't want that short gravel one. So 27... 111, or sorry, 110.7. 27 is 110.7. Let's go over here. 110.7. 24 miles. Let's see if there's any procedures. Atlas 27. Say vectors. Load that. You can see it's over here. Uh, let me go over here. We'll go ahead and activate that approach. We're on the G using GPS right now. I want this turn. There it goes. Activate the approach. And you'll see us turn into it. 268 is the heading. About right there. Right, 27 miles to that waypoint. We're coming up on 5,000 feet. Turn that taxi light back on. Let's increase the mixture a little bit. And we have tons of fuel. Tons of fuel to burn. So I had this set to 3,500. Um, we might be able to go to actually to 3,000. Because we're not going to go to land. Well, we're going to come over a little bit of it, I think. We'll bring the autopilot back up. And then let's speed this up to 2x. Just slowly coming down to about 500 feet a minute. Just making sure we don't get into the yellow. At 500 feet a minute, we haven't gotten into it yet. So we should be just fine. Might have to redo our heading. I can't tell. If kind of coming in. I don't want to have to. Might just have it. Use the heading. We'll see. So I think we're going to fly to that waypoint and then have to like come out. I'd like to avoid that. Not that it's a huge deal. So let me actually probably have to do that. So my heading over here right a little bit go over and switch to heading come up on our 3,000 feet 4,900 3,900 sorry I went up to 9,500. We were at 7,500, and uh, we were kind of right in the clouds, so I went up to 9,500 uh, feet, and it was it was pretty nice. We were just above the clouds. It was a good view and everything. I think we were technically supposed to turn the anti-ice off as we descend, but the thing is, in this plane, they always have this ice up um, quickly, so I don't like doing that. You know, I think technically you are supposed to uh, turn it off. That's why I don't. Go 
ahead and go full mixture. go out just a little bit more stop here at 3,000 feet there we go nine point we're actually yeah going away from the airport now this airport's right over here. We're going out to uh, that waypoint. In fact, we could actually drop down a little bit and not go all the way to the waypoint. That's probably what we should do. There is no real reason to go clear out to the waypoint. I'm going to pull back on the thrust a little bit. Aw, oh, man. Why did it have to redo that? don't see any, well, glide slope or anything. Stop it right here on 2700 feet. There we go. Slow this down to normal speed. Didn't quite go all the way out over there. Sorry. back on the thrust a little more. I was worried about the visibility. It is total garbage. don't see anything on our uh, ILS though. I don't see anything on the glide slope. You can see uh, that moving, tracking. But I don't see anything as far as glide slope or anything. Start cutting over towards it. There, that's why, because I still had it on GPS, that's why. So the glide slope is actually above us, which is fine. Switch this to nav. So we ended up turning a little too zoom. Come on now. I'm going to switch back to heading. Flight slope is coming down, so we'll descend a little bit. I can't see a thing. Much on the glide so I can't use the approach hole because we're not we don't have the uh, ILS signal just yet don't know why it's not moving over let's see if we can get it now It's coming over, but we don't seem to be moving. There it goes. All right. Let's 
fastened a little bit quicker. The approach hold. Oops, that's not what I wanted to hit. That. Need to get our gear out. Stupid thing is winding, but I, I, I got, I, I had to get my speed down too. Cause I can't get my flaps out. We're only, we're less than five miles away now. We're up on twelve hundred feet. That's one notch of flaps. Man, at a thousand feet and we can't see anything. It's Alaskan weather. Flaps coming out. This plane does not have auto land. We're, I mean, we gotta disconnect the autopilot for the runway, but how, how are we going to do that exactly? I'm worried. I don't think we're going to be able to do it. I think it's going to say that it's this foggy all the way to the ground. I can just see parts of the ground. 2.2 out. I saw a flash, but I can't see anything. It says the glide slope is just above us. You see it? Easy there, easy there. I said we have a nice long runway, I'll tell you that. Wow, could you imagine landing, a, even just attempting to land on an 1800 foot gravel runway in conditions like this? Wow. I hope we didn't miss our last taxiway. <laughs> I thought about uh, using trying to hit the reversers, but I, I thought we might be able to hit that last taxiway, but we couldn't, just using the brakes. Oh, we didn't say that we were on final. Damn it! I always forget that. I hate that I forget that too. It's just I, I'm concentrating, especially on this one. That was uh. It was quite nice. I really didn't know. I did. I really didn't think that the they were going to be able to complete this flight. Wow, that was uh, that was it was nice. Anti-collision landing lights. You come off. You turn off the anti-ice as well. All right. Track the flaps. I keep forgetting to do that recently. Wow, that was. Uh, I really thought. I, no, I thought the weather would break around 3,000 feet or so, but no. It just. It was terrible. Then a few hundred feet over, we started being able to see the ground. It was like, oh my goodness. We did it though. Did not crash. Let's take a turn over here. There's a helicopter. Place for a helicopter, I should say. So I guess technically, uh, kind of looks like we're almost supposed to be coming the other way. We're supposed to be backed in there, like that other plane. But we can do about it. Lose the yoke. Parking brake comes on. Cut the. I want to get dinged. Oh, 
open the hatch? Look at those ducks. Blower. I was like, what switch is that? Are those ducks in the water? <laughs> They're a little cold for that. That was that was an exciting landing, I had to say. That was sweet. It's kind of nerve-wracking, like, are we going to be able to see? But after it's done, it's like, wow, I really enjoyed that. I want some more of that. Let's go ahead and end this flight. 272 nautical miles. Time, everyone, 1 hour, 29 minutes, 22 seconds. Flight uh, time, hour, 39.46. Time on the ground, 12 minutes, 51 seconds. Average speed, 182.77 knots. Climb time, 7 hours, or 7 hours. 7 minutes, 2 seconds. Cruise time, 1 hour, 4 minutes, 58 seconds. Average cruise speed, 205 knots. Sit time, 17.22. Landing speed, 84.94. Landing touchdown, come down at 63.1 feet a minute. That's a kiss. Landing pitch, 2.75 degrees. Landing weight, uh, 79.30. Total fuel use, 453. Climb fuel use, 42 pounds. Cruise, 334. Use about 308 uh, pounds an hour. Sit fuel use, 76. 1,251 for the tickets, 755 for the cargo. Uh, we use $346 with the fuel, $8 for airport taxes, $86 for the insurance. Even so, real uh, income of 1,566 times 50 gives 78,300. Then we get an extra 103,000 from our fleet, giving us a 181,551. That is uh, really, really nice. We need money like that. Uh, they thought we should be 100%, so we increased 0.2% uh, percent to 97.97. Oh, man. We made a very smooth landing, plus 50. Perfect flight. Uh, no problems. Very satisfied. Passion 150. Landed at the right airport 30. Beacon lights must be activated as soon as the engine is running, and you forgot them. Did I really? Did I click those? Wait, we don't have a beacon. We only have nav. Do we always lose 50 in this plane? I thought this was one of the planes that we didn't. We don't have a beacon. But I thought we didn't lose it in this plane. I could be wrong. Anyway, it's cold in here. Close that door. Here we are. Cordova. It's just ducks. Damn ducks. It's cold out here. You shouldn't. They, how can the ducks be in the water? Anyway. Cordova. Not sure where we're going to go next. I just usually check the map and uh, look at some. I have an airport list uh, to up here. But uh, we actually need to be start heading out of here. I was thinking about maybe going down to Ketchikan. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not going to totally retrace our steps down. Uh, down. Cause I think we went from Juno. We went from Ketchikan to Juno. I thought. And it wasn't uh, quite long enough. So I. I don't know. Really could have gone to catch a game from where, where we would have made a ton of money doing that. But we're going to start heading south and then head across Canada and everything. Go to. I guess we're going to head across Canada. There's some people who want some flights there. I wanted to stop at Portland, though, uh, before we head over there. And I got a request for somewhere over in Saskatchewan. Saskatoon? What it, something like that? I don't know. And uh, is it Saskatoon? Something like that. But uh, anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. I hope you all did enjoy it, and I'll catch you guys on the next flight.